In this video, we're going to study diffraction and interference in a ripple tank. Let's see what happens when straight waves come through an opening in a barrier. So you're going to see waves being made up here. And this right here, this gray line, is a barrier. And you can see there's an opening in it. So these straight waves are going to come through the barrier. So what you might expect to see is you might expect to see waves primarily coming through here. So let's find out what happens. Notice we do see waves coming through here. But look at this, we also see waves that are going way over to the side. So way back here behind the barriers, I'm still seeing waves. Now let's also see what effect having different wavelengths is. So we're going to increase the wavelength by decreasing the frequency. And notice now we get very circular waves coming through here. So straight waves coming in, going through the opening, make really circular waves. And notice behind the barriers, I really see a lot of waves. So if I shorten the wavelengths by increasing the frequency, again, I notice I get the waves coming through here, but they're spreading out through the opening, and they spread out behind the barriers. And the longer the wavelengths, the more spreading out that there is. The spreading out of waves through an opening or spreading around a barrier or an obstacle in the path of the wave, this spreading out is called diffraction. So the official science definition of diffraction, it's the bending of a wave around a barrier, such as an obstacle or the edges of an opening. In the case we just saw, diffraction occurs when the size of the opening is about the size of the wavelength of the waves. Now let's see what diffraction looks like in an actual ripple tank. So here's the ripple tank and here's two pieces of metal that are sitting in the water. Water's all over here. And here is an opening that the waves are going to come through. Now the waves are being made way back here. And the waves are being made by a straight wave generator. So we're making straight waves and then they're going to come through the opening. So let's watch. Notice back here, behind the barrier, I'm getting the waves spreading out behind the barrier. That's diffraction. And the waves are spreading out behind the barrier. And notice how circular these waves are. And that's because this wavelength, distance between the crests here, is pretty close to the distance that the opening is. Here's another view of diffraction, so you've got straight waves going through an opening, making circular waves. So the idea is that the energy of the waves that's here, we would expect the barrier to block it. But notice that if I'm way over here, I think I'm safe from the waves coming through the opening or over here. But notice that the waves spread out, which is called diffraction. Next, we're going to talk about interference in the ripple tank. So to understand this, we need to remember concepts like what interference is, what's constructive interference, what's destructive interference, what nodes and antinodes are. Now, if you have trouble remembering what these are, you may need to review the wave interactions and standing wave videos to remember what these concepts are. We're going to study interference first by using our special ripple tank animator. And then after we talk about what we see with the simulation, then we can see what it looks like in a real ripple tank. So first of all, what I have 
is a point source right here that's making circular waves and the bright areas here are crests and the darker areas are troughs. You can see we're making a succession of crests and troughs. But to be able to have interference, if you remember, you've got to have uh, more than one source of waves. So let's put in uh, two waves, two sources of waves, which are both going to make circular waves. And then when we start this, the two sets of circular waves are going to mix, causing interference and forming an interference pattern. So let's watch. Now the key thing to note here is that there are lines that are bumpy like this and they alternate. Here's a bumpy line, here's a bumpy line, here's a bumpy line. And then I notice in between the bumpy lines there's also lines of it's very it's clear. So I notice that as I move across the pattern like this I see it's bumpy and smooth and bumpy and smooth and bumpy and smooth. So what we want to do is want to try to think about what is causing this alternating pattern of bumpy lines and smooth lines. So first of all let's do this. Let's uh, increase the frequency. Actually we're going to increase the wavelength by decreasing the frequency. So we turn the frequency down and let's make longer wavelength waves and see what the pattern looks like here. All right, now I notice that I have here's a bumpy line, here's a bumpy line, here's a bumpy line, here's a bumpy line, here's a bumpy line. So the bumpy lines alternate with smooth lines. So notice in between the bumpy lines, here's a smooth line, here's a smooth line, here's a smooth line, here's a smooth line. So the real question is why are there bumpy lines and why are there smooth lines? So let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, we remember that both of these two sources right here are making circular waves and what that means is they are sending out a succession of crests and troughs. So if I look at this point right here, I can see that it's bright. And what's happening right at that point is that a crest from this source and a crest from this source are both meeting right here. So that's called constructive interference. Two crests make an even bigger crest. What's making this dark spot is that two troughs from the two sources, a trough from here, a trough from here, are both meeting there, making an even bigger trough, which is also constructive interference. So all the way along this line, what's happening is two crests are meeting, then two troughs, then two crests, then two troughs, then two crests, then two troughs. And that constructive interference all happens along one line. And that's called a line of anti-nodes, because along this line is constructive interference. So now I think of, well, what would make these smooth areas in between the bumpy lines? So if, as you may have already guessed, if right here, in between the bumpy lines, a crest from here is meeting a trough from here, always at this location, a crest meeting a trough is destructive interference because the waves would cancel. And so then the water would actually be smooth there, a crest canceling a trough. And that that happens also along a line. Everywhere along here, a crest from one source is meeting a trough from the other source. So you have lines of constructive interference, lines of destructive interference, and then constructive, destructive. The constructive ones are called lines of anti-nodes. The destructive ones are called lines of nodes. Now if I turn up the frequency, make very short wavelengths, I can see there is still a pattern of lines of nodes and lines of anti-nodes.
So I can see, even though they're much closer together, there's a bumpy line, and then in between is a smooth line, hard to, for me to point to it. Bumpy line, smooth line, bumpy line, smooth line. And there's a lot more of them, simply because the wavelengths are a lot shorter, so these places where there's cancellation and addition are much closer to each other. And that's what interference in a ripple tank would look like. Let's summarize. An interference pattern, which is what you just saw, is a pattern formed by the overlapping of two or more waves that arrive in a region at the same time. Where crests meet with crests, or troughs meet with troughs, which are the bumpy lines in the pattern, constructive interference occurs. These are called lines of antinodes. Where crests meet troughs, which are on the smooth lines in between the bumpy lines, destructive interference occurs. These are called lines of nodes. Now let's see what interference looks like in a real actual ripple tank with real actual water. Now notice I can still see there's a bumpy line right there. Here's a bumpy line. Here's a bumpy line. Here's a bumpy line. And here is a smooth line in between the bumpy lines. Here's a smooth line. So that's a line of antinodes. That's a line of antinodes. That's a line of antinodes. Line of nodes. Line of nodes. Constructive interference here. Destructive interference. Constructive. Destructive. Here again, I can see line of antinodes constructive, line of nodes destructive, line of antinodes constructive.